Hello students, today I'll be completing NBSC 2015 mains uh, paper uh, part 1 analysis. So this will be for 126 marks. <coughs> I have 126 marks la first part 2 of Koro from uh, question, question number 1 up to question number 28 which will be in sequential order that is from 2 marks, 5 marks. Uh, 10 marks and 20 marks and I'll be completing all the question So let's get the video started and second portion of Nagaland will be uploaded in the next video on part 2 So let's get the video started next How the second constitutional amendment act has impacted the power of the Indian constitution So we know that for the second constitution amendment was also known as the mini constitution where uh, Prime Minister Indira Gandhi played with the constitution and as a result of it, the 42nd Amendment was also known as the Mini Constitution. So, uh, regarding the power of the President, the Article 74 was amended and it stipulated that President is bound to act according to the advice of the Council of Ministers. And it also granted the power to the President in consultation with the ECA to disqualify members of the state legislature. So, the two functions we can write for two marks, that is. Uh, Article 74 was amended so that the president will act according to the advice of the Council of Ministers and it also granted powers to the president to uh, disqualify the members of the state legislature, any state legislature in consultation with the Election Commission of India. And additional uh, information is that the state emergency was also increased from six months to one year. Uh, distinguish between vote on account and interim budget. So vote on account means the it is a process by which an incumbent government that is a government that is in power votes for, from the parliament to draw money out of the consolidated fund of india so to cook to draw money out of the consolidated fund of india during the annual financial statement or budget the vote on account is uh, initiated and it deals with only expenditure side however interim budget is a budget that is that is passed by a uh, by an outgoing government before the next election is held and uh, for definition, we can write it. It is a complete set of accounts, including both expenditure and receipts. An interim budget gives a complete financial st statement, uh, very similar to a full st full budget. That is, and uh, when the government is about to uh, about to be re-elected during the time, the budget pass is also known as the interim budget. Next. What is delegated legislation? Delegated legislation in simple terms. If we write for two marks, we can write this as uh, delegating or transferring some powers. Transferring some powers from the uh, from the legislative to the executive. That is, the legislator are transferring some powers to the permanent executive. That is the bureaucrats. So it is a power. It is a process by which the executive authority is given power by the primary legislation. That is, legislator to make laws in order to implement and administer the requirement of the primary legislature and it is also known as uh, secondary subordinate or subsidiary legislation the in this process the the legislation will just keep a basic framework of the uh, law and the bureaucrats are uh, have to make laws on this uh, subject for example if uh, for example the latest farm bill so in order to make a farm bill the leg the legislature will will give an outline of the basic structure of the laws and in order to um, in order to put the details into the law the the legislator delegates some powers to the bureaucrats to make certain um, modification into the laws and this is called delegated legislation or transferring powers from the legislator to the executive what is split system so split system is the splitting of the indian of the public service in India into three, that is all India service consisting of both, uh, consisting uh, that is common to both center and state, that is IAS, IFS, and IFOS, that is Indian Administrative Service, Indian Police Service, Indian Forest Service, etc. Central services that are exclusive jurisdiction of the central government, that is the Central Engineering Service, Central Health Services, Indian Forest Service, etc. All are under uh, central services and state services, that is the concerned with the state, that is. NPSC, APSC, OPSC, GPSC, anything relating to the State Public Service Commission. Next, Program Evaluation Organization. So, what is Program Evaluation Organization? It is an organization to uh, evaluate the Community Development Program and, uh, and other intensive area development program, which was established in October 1952. So, for two marks, we can write that 
it is yeah, it is in, it is provided with the task to evaluate the community development program and other intensive area development program and it is established in october 1952 under the guidance of the planning commission but now it will be under the niti ayok next sort out some elements of administrative ethics inherent in government servant service rules so administrative ethics consists of behavioral integrity that is uh, abstaining from corruption concept of rationality and objectivity objectivity that is taking our actions according to the facts and figures and functional accountability that is wish that a public servant should be accountable to his or her action and honesty means and a public servant should be honest enough and open-minded so this if you write this for we can expect two marks what is LGBT movement LGBT movement refers to legal uh, lesbian gay sexual transsexual movement and it is a social movement that uh, provides for social equality marriage equality and against discrimination we know that many uh, the third gender has been facing many discrimination so in order to in order to prevent this discrimination the LGBT movement was launched next what are Vaishaka guidelines so Vaishaka guidelines were launched before the sexual harassment of women workplace 2013 it was launched before this and these are procedural guidelines on cases of sexual assault or harassment and they were promulgated by the supreme court in 1997 however the vaishaka guidelines were replaced by the new I mean, new legislation that is the sexual harassment of women at workplace prevention of Car uh, Pro Prohibish uh, prohibition Pro redressal act 2013 next briefly this uh, mentioned the duties of the protection officer under the protection of women under domestic violence act 2005 so under the domestic violence act 2005 the the job of the protection officer is to assist the magistrate in dealing with these uh, cases uh, to make a report reporting the domestic incident to the magistrate upon receipt or complaint from the victim and forward copies to the designated police officer within the local limits so for two marks we don't need to write anything we just have to write two marks uh, two points to make the point we do not, we should not waste uh, much time in writing uh, too much content in a two mark uh, question so next explain why dalit movement in india is characterized as a new social movement so for this answer we need just focus that dalit is dalit movement why dalit movement has been launched that is uh, it is a movement to regain open self-respect and equal human status in society and and this movement this movement has been aimed to provide equality liberty social justice scientific and rational religious and moral principles and social and economic cultural and political development of the dalit so we can write that the dalit movements are launched as seen as a new social movement in order to uplift the dalit society so for two marks if you write this uh, for to regain self-respect and equal human status in the society and it is aimed at equality liberty social justice scientific and rational religious and moral principles then we can at least expect out of two one half or one next what is el nino so what is el nino el nino is a warm ocean current and it is developed over the course of peru as an temporary replacement of the peruvian current and the word el nino comes from the spanish word uh, the child and it refers to the baby christ and this el nino forms around the month of december so it is called christ child and it leads to increase in risk sea surface temperature and weakening of trade winds in the region and it is one of the uh, natural phenomena in geography next what is the great indian desert tar, uh, desert region so the great indian tar, uh, desert region is also known as a tar desert and it is a region of rolling sand steel uh, sand hills on indian subcontinent and it is partly located in Rajasthan if it is given Indian so we need to focus on an Indian region so Rajasthan, Punjab and part of Sindh and Eastern Pakistan we can uh, neglect and the area is 2 lakh square kilometers and if we, uh, we can write that it is bordered by Indus River in the west that if the Thar Desert is here the Indus River in the west the Punjab region in the north Punjab the Aravalis in the southeast in the southeast and Aravalis in the southeast and run of Kanchi in the south near Gujarat so with this is the third desert region for two marks we can uh, explain this next what is humus humus is the dead rotting dead matter in the soil it is uh, we can write this it is very useful for growing crops and 
The soil is divided into many layers called horizon and upper layer is generally dark in color and it is rich in humus also called topsoil or a horizon. So the topsoil is also called the top part of the soil is also called the humus and it is it consists of black color which is very fertile. Next jhum cultivation in India. So what is jhum? Jhum is also known as sedimentary rudimentary farming slash of burn in which a patch of land in any patch of land the crop the the vegetation is burned and uh, is cleared burned and crops are grown on this field and the fertilizer and the fertilization is provided by the burnt uh, vegetation which con which is very uh, rich in potash nitrogen etc and this is also known as slash or burn cultivation because we are slashing and burning the vegetation and planting crops on it and this is known by different names in different states of India Jum in Assam Panam in Kerala, Puru in Andhra Pradesh, Bewar in Madhya Pradesh, and Jhum in the northeastern region of India. How will you define environmental movement in the context of India? So, uh, for this, we need to write a short description on what is environmental uh, movement. Since it is for just for two marks, we can just write one line that environmental movement is a movement that is aimed at protection of environment. And we can write some of the movement as Bishnoi movement in the uh, uh, which started in the 1700s, and it was aimed to. Uh, safe secretaries and some additional information is that we can write Jibko Mumbon which was started in 1973 and 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 it happened at a district called Chamoli in Uttarakhand and it was led by Sundaralal Bahukuna who recently died due to COVID-19 Silent Valley movement which happened in Kerala and uh, it was started in 1978 and Narmada Bajau Andalan in 1985 which was against the building of number of them such as the Sarda Sarovar Dam and it and uh, it was it was uh, built on the river Narmada. Next, what is persistent organic products? So, persistent organic products, persistent organic product. So, what is persistent organic product? Persistent organic product are those are those organic compounds which are resistant to environmental degradation through chemical biological and phot photolytic process means that those those products which do not degrade even in the environment through chemical biological or photolytic process and they accumulate in the environment and cause adverse effect on the human health environment and some of the uh, persistent organic compounds are ddd that is dichloro diphenyl trichloroethane uh, which is used as an uh, insecticide however it was born uh, following the stockholm convention so these are the and some persistent organic compounds are aldrin and deldrin next for economy two marks what are the causes of non-development expenditures non-development expenditure are those types of expenditure which do not bring any profit into the economy so these are spending on welfare activities which do not bring any growth in the economy in defense expenditure grants in aid to the states and payment of salary allowance to the employees so if you write for just you can write for uh, two points for two marks or if you want to expand you can just write four points for two marks what is period of plant holiday and why is it called so so plant holiday is what plant holiday was initiated in the year 1966 to 69 so what why why was it uh, launched because it uh, due to due to after it was launched after the third five-year plan and it was launched because India was facing huge drought and and uh, since it was in war with China so the the fourth five-year plan was uh, was slashed and and in place of this <coughs> uh, three plans were three annual plans were launched and this was called the plan holiday the parliament called this period as a discontinuity and planning process as the plans were supposed to be for five months uh, for five years however they yeah they <coughs> planned it for just three years and it is and they named it as plan holiday because the planning was on a holiday and it was due to the uh, drought and uh, indochina war of 1962 for five marks write a short note on the changing role of the pmo so what is pmo pmo stands for prime minister office and it is the head of the office and the real executive authority that plays a significant role and we need to we need to write short note on the evolution of the pmo so uh, do, uh this described in the pmo it it is the head of this government and real executive authority plays a significant role 
and BM is assisted by the BMO. The BMO is meant for providing secretarial assistance and crucial advice to the Prime Minister. And BMO is an extra constitutional body and it was established in 1947 by Jawaharlal Nehru, replacing the Secretary to the, gov to the Governor General personal. And till 1977, it was called the PM Secretariat. However, after that, it was named the PMO, that is Prime Minister Office. And uh, during the and various roles, there were various roles. So, in in during the term of Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, it was very compact. And the secretary to the Prime Minister was called the Principal Private Secretary, just like the British Prime Minister under the Lal Bahadur Shastri government. It was strengthened. And under Indira Gandhi, it she created the Prime Minister's Secretary, which was not only a parallel government but also substituted for departmental structure. Adal Bihari Bajpai uh, also is also um, is um, provided some changes to it. However, during the Man Mohan Singh era, it consisted of many technocrats and not only bureaucrats was also technocrats. However, uh, the PMO received was uh, the BMO underwent a paradigm change when the uh, Narendra Modi came to power in 2014 and he replaced not only bureaucrats, technocrats but also politicians and his slogan of minimum government, maximum governance was one of the main role that played in the changing of the BMO. Thus, it empowers the bureaucrats and technocrats for faster decision making and and more direct involvement in decision making was done under the prime ministership of Narendra Modi. So let's next move to the next question, question number two. Critically discuss the role of National Development Council. So the National Development Council is an executive body established by the government of India in August 1952, which was neither a constitutional body nor a state board. That is, an, it, it was an extra constitutional body, just like the Planning Commission, and it is the apex body to decide on the matters related to the approval of the Pfeiffer plan. So to to establish the Pfeiffer plan to stop uh, to to approve the Pfeiffer plan the National Development Council was established and the Prime Minister is the ex official chairman of the NDC and the role of the NDC is that to provide guidelines to provide the uh, necessary steps to formulate the national plan and to to give approval to consider the national plan as formulated by the planning commission the niti ayok and assess the resources available so as to implement the uh, plan and to review the working of the plan and the national development the national development council consists of the following of following uh, people that is the prime minister is the chairman the chairman the chief minister of all the states administrators all cabinet ministers and members of the niti ayok so this we can explain that for five marks we can explain a little bit of the NDC that it is a sub it is a extra constitutional body which was established in 1952 and it uh, it was really it is an apex body to make decision on the matters relating to the approval of the five plan and the prime minister is the ex official chairman and this role is that it do, to provide the necessary steps for the formulation to approve the national plan to access the resources and to review the plan and to recommend necessary changes for achieving aims and targets set out in the national plan and some of the composition you can write for five marks and um, before the 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 planning commission before the planning commission used to submit the plan to the cabinet and the cabinet will submit to the national development council after the approval only it is submitted into the parliament so it is a very continuous process if the plan is not approved by the National Development Council, then uh, the 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 plan, the five-year plan, is not forwarded to the Parliament. So it plays a very crucial role, and it is the second strongest uh, body, only next to the uh, Planning Commission or the Niti Aayog. Next, what is Bachpan Bajo on the land? So Bachpan means childhood. Bachpan means childhood. Bajo means uh, saving, and Andolan means movement. So. Bachpan Bajau Andolan was safe childhood movement or is an Indian Indian based movement campaigning for the rights of children. It was started in 1980. So Bachpan Bajau Andolan was started by Nobel laureate Mr. Kailash Satyarthi and it it focused to end bonded labor that is labor that is uh, passed on from generations uh, child labor that is uh, 
putting children to work, underage work, and human trafficking for sex uh, trafficking, etc., as well as right to education for all children. The the Bajpa on Bajpa on the land, we can write this that it was started by Kailash Satrati 1980, and and he won the Nobel Prize for, in 2014 for uh, against this uh, for preventing child labor and. This Pachpan Bajao Andalan is focused on ending bonded labor, child labor, and human trafficking, and also right to education. And <coughs> the the significance is that it helped in preventing child labor, and through public awareness and community intervention. And uh, second is protection. That is protecting. First is first is prevention of child labor. Second is protection that is protecting child from by uh, recovering money fines from the employers and traffickers and providing rehabilitation. So prevention, protection and rehabilitation are the three steps taken by the Bajpan Bajo Andalan to save the those to protect the child child and under rehabilitation uh, they just repeat twenty thousand on the employers if they are caught trafficking or employing uh, underage child in labor. And compensation of twenty thousand from government and other social welfare schemes. So, these uh, are the functions of the Bajpan Bajau Andalan. What is positive euthanasia? Positive is euthanasia. Euthanasia. First, we have to know what is euthanasia. Euthanasia is the practice of intentionally ending a life to prevent the relief, pain, and suffering. So, it basically means that if a, if a family member is is on the verge of dying, however, he is in a coma, and the 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 relatives are not willing to let him die but but because he cannot be revived so the process of ending his life by cutting off the supply of uh, of medicine while he's unconscious is also known as euthanasia and the the position and some these are some of the current efforts so these are uh, related to the current efforts during that time so we just need to know what is positive euthanasia that is ending a person's life who is suffering we can end uh, because he he because he is in a uh, vegetative state that is in coma so next write a short note, short note on the major industrial regions of india so major industrial regions of india are number one is mumbai Pune industrial region and it is uh, it is extends from Mumbai, Pune to Thane, Nasik and it helps it started with the development of cotton textile industry and and Mumbai due to climate condition and hydroelectricity developed in the western gas and major centers are Mumbai, Thane, Pune, Trombay, Nasik and Hooghly industrial region it is in West Bengal and its main industry are in Kolkata, Haura, Shibur, Haldia and it, its main products are D and Jute industries. Next Bangalore Chennai industrial region. We know that Bangalore is known as the Silicon Valley of in India, and uh, it led to the development of engineering industries like uh, uh, Hindustan Aer Aer Aeronautics Limited, uh, the export of electronic devices, and development of cotton mills in Tamil Nadu, especially Coimbatore, uh, which is known as the Manchester of India. So, the Bangalore Chennai industrial region is also one of the industrial region. Gujarat industrial region. So, Gujarat is famous for cotton textile. So, we can write this as uh, it is it is famous for cotton textile and also oil is uh, is is found there. And next, Chota Napur region. Chota Napur region is also located near Jharkhand, Orissa, Chhattisgarh, and it is a nucleus of heavy iron and steel industry. And coal mines, uh, iron iron and steel mines are also extracted from this region. And major centers are Bokaro, that is in Jharkhand, Bilai also in Jharkhand, Durgapur, West Bengal, Jamshedpur. Mm, Jagan. So these are the industrial regions of India. That is, first is Mumbai Pune region, Hooghly industrial region that is in West Bengal, Bengaluru China region, and Gujarat industrial region and Chotanagpur region. So for five marks, you can ex we can write only five points. What is new public management? So uh, this is related to public administration. And first, we have to know what is new public administration. So new public administration was first given was was uh, emerged it emerged as a result of terrorism in public administration or neo terrorism and it, the idea was given by Osborne and Gibler in the book reinventing government and new public management basically means that uh, shifting the 
shifting the administration to private enterprises and government manager had become inefficient and unequal and must be reinvented and the question of the role of government have, have been dealt with so new public management emerged uh, as a result of neoliberalism and the father of public ad administration withdraw wilson has said that uh, new public management is necessary because uh, government are inefficient and we need private enterprises in new in government administration so because of this the 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 problems that are with public with traditional public administration it is very rigid inefficient and irresponsive so the features of the new public management is that it is autonomy autonomy that is free from uh, free from shackles from other problems managerialism that is providing man uh, managerial type of administration privatization and de bureaucratization that is uh, minimizing the bureau uh, bureaucracy in administration accountability to client and public that is uh, accountable to the actions to the public and government role steering not rowing so government role is showing the direction not uh, po providing the necessary uh, not doing all the work but just providing the necessary direction to go in that uh, way so the impact of new public management has led to many developments such as in united states it has led to the national performance review in united kingdom it led to the next public next step agencies in india it led to the development of the new economic policies which opened the doors of india to the outside world and this advancement in psu and PSU increased due to memor mem memorandum of understanding. So, next, discuss the shift in Indian policy orientation from a centrally controlled economy to a market controlled economy. So, do notice before 1991, India was under a controlled economy. That is, the the, the government controlled the production, uh, controlled the uh, modes of production, and uh, industries were getting very uh, were getting difficulty in getting access to development because the because of the rigid policies of indian government so and it was also a closed economy so we can write this and because of this because of this for implementing uh, on in before 1991 for implementing various policies the government generated funds from taxation running public sector enterprises and and due to the rigid policies of the government the new economic policy was introduced in 1991 and then under this new economic policies many structural reforms were provided that is uh, liberalization that is what is liberalization liberalization is liberating the industry from the shackles of the government and how to how they remove is by uh, removing the unnecessary rules and regulation increasing competition among domestic industries encouraging foreign trade with other countries enhancing forest foreign capital expanding global market and privatization what is privatization means allowing the private company to uh, to invest in india so by privatization more fda more foreign direct investment came into the india and it it <coughs> it increased the uh, it increased the gdp of a of our india and what how and also under privatization uh, foreign companies who uh, can uh, foreign companies participated in this um, in the production of goods and commodities in India and how India how the Indian government provided is by this investment that is by selling off some portion of their shares to the private sector so as to allow private sector to um, to participate in the uh, planning process and globalization globalization means connecting the Indian economy with the rest of the world um, by <coughs> and this allows for foreign direct foreign trade and private and institutional foreign investment that is foreign companies used to invest here well uh, foreign companies will invest here through fdi that is foreign direct investment and foreign institutional investment foreign institution investment means um, uh, other countries um, putting their capitals into the indian banks and other financial institutions so these are the three uh, principle that is liberalization globaliz uh, privatization globalization which helped to evolve Indian economy from a uh, 
from a centrally controlled economy to a market economy so because of this our economy boomed since 1991 uh, our GDP increased the per capita income also increased and and also the economic growth also increased experiencing more than 8% of the uh, economic growth because of private because of this new economic policy of Dr. Man Mon Singh next analyze the role of CAG so we need to write a small about CAG CAG is under article 148 and and it is used to and the CAG is to uphold the constitution of India in the field of parliament and financial administration and appointment instead it is appointed by the president of India Six, it should be 65 years of age and he cannot be removed uh, easily that is he needs to be removed as a judge of a supreme court and the function is that article 149 provides for function and it the role of the CAG is to audit the accounts of the consolidated fund of india uh, account the con um, audit the contingency fund of india the trading accounts manufacturers profit and loss accounts department of all state and union government and audit the receipt and expenditure of central central and state government and audit the re receipts and expenditure of all the state government all the state and central government companies departments and corporation and bodies whenever required by law and the role of CIG is that upholding the constitution of india and laws of parliament in the field of financial administration and these are some of the functions and it also contains audits so for uh, no need to write too much uh, for 20 marks just write the introduction for CIG, the composition of uh, the uh, CAG a brief description and the uh, functions of the CAG so next is what and uh, describe the composition and function so they are uh, telling us to find the composition and function of the NITI Act so composition is that uh, he the Prime Minister is the head of the NITI Act and governing council consists of the chief minister of all the states union territories of legislature that is Delhi Bonnichi and lieutenant governors of other union territories and under the regional council it uh, it is convened by the prime minister and con comprises of chief minister and lieutenant governor council state and it is chaired by the chairperson of the niti ayok and special invitees are and those having specialized knowledge and subject matter are nominated by the prime minister to uh, participate in the niti ayok and under the full time organization framework the, the the following mentioned above are all part-time and for full-time is that it is a vice chairman and he enjoys the rank of a cabinet minister members is they are full-time and they enjoy the rank of a minister of state and part-time members are two from research and other institution ex official members are maximum of two union or uh, four union ministers nominated by the prime minister and chief executive officer is appointed by the chief min by the prime minister on tenure basis in the rank of a cabinet secretary and the function of the niti ayog is cooperating and cooperative federalism that is cooperation between the states and promoting federalism next uh, shared national agenda that is whatever the state has planned it should be uh, it should be shared among the states next states best friend at the center so the niti ayog should serve as an alternative to the to the planning commission that is whatever the help the states need the niti ayok should provide to the states whatever in whatever research, uh, research in whatever field they require decentralized planning that is planning from the top to the bottom that is from the prime minister to the chief minister to the local self-government it should provide for decentralized planning next vision and scenario that is the niti ayok should form a vision and vision that to achieve those goals and it provide better planning for long term and long uh, short term and long term strategic framework and the next is domains domain strategies that is building a repository of specialized domain experts that is niti ayok um, niti ayok providing the necessary human resource for need by the states and network of expertise that is uh, providing external ideas to the government policies and knowledge and innovation hub that is be, uh, be an accumulator as well as disseminator of research and best practice in go good governance and uh, 
conflict resolution that is reducing the conflict between the center and the states and monitoring and evaluation that is whatever plan the niti ayok plans it should be monitored by this by 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 the niti ayok so that uh, the the visions are established and the policies and um, programs and evaluation and evaluate the impact through tracking of performance and evaluation so with this the part one of the mains 2015 has been uh, completed i hope you like this please like and share for next video